plant tissues. Uh, just a reminder of the topics that we have discussed. Plant tissues are basically classified into two types, the meristematic and permanent tissues. We have discussed the differences between them. Meristematic tissues are the tissues which are made up of cells which continuously divide. Permanent tissues are the group of cells which do not divide, they carry out other life activities. We have seen in meristematic tissue three types. The apical meristematic tissues, the lateral meristematic tissues, and the intercalary meristematic tissues. Epical increases the height of the plant, lateral increases the thickness of plant, intercalary meristem helps in the growth of new branches and leaves. As far as permanent tissues are concerned, they are basically classified into two types. The simple permanent tissues and the complex permanent tissues. The simple permanent tissues we have discussed are basically four types. The parenchyma, the colenchyma, the sclerenchyma, and the protective tissues. Protective tissues were again classified into two types, the epidermis and the corp tissue. We have talked about the parenchyma are the group of thin walled cells having intercellular spaces. Basically helps in storage of substances and life activities. Colenchyma are thickened at the corners due to deposition of waste. Intercellular space is filled up with wastes, they give support to the plant parts. Sclerenchyma is a group of dead cells. It's a group of dead cells, make, mainly provides the mechanical strength to the plants. Protective tissues are protective in function. Epidermis present as the outer covering of all the plant parts and cork as you know is a special kind of sclerenchyma tissue actually, which is deposited with suberin. It does not allow the entry of water, heat, or even microorganisms and protects the underlying plant parts. All these are known as simple permanent tissue. Why? Because they are group of similar cells. All the cells in this tissue are exactly similar to each other. In parenchyma, you find large number of cells, all the cells are exactly the same. In sclerenchyma, there are large number of cells, all the cells are exactly the same. That is why they are called as simple permanent tissue. As far as complex permanent tissues are concerned, they are group of many different type of cells. So the tissue is a group of cells, but the cells are different from each other. Many different type of cells join to form the tissue. That is why they are called complex permanent tissue and they are of two types that is xylem and phloem. So in this part of video we will concentrate mostly on the complex permanent tissue which are of two types xylem and phloem. We will see what are they. Basically, the complex permanent tissues are also called as conducting tissues. Why they are called as conducting tissues? Because they help in the conduction of water and food from one part to another part. You know, the water available to the plants are there under the ground. From there, the roots absorb it and how that water which is absorbed by the roots from the ground goes to every part of the plant body. That is by 
the tissue called xylem. Xylem helps in conduction of water along with the dissolved salts from the roots to all other parts. The process is called as ascent of sap. That is the name given to the process which occurs through the island. As far as flowing is concerned, it helps in the flowing helps in the conduction of food and hormones. from the tip of plant shoot to all other parts. The process is known as translocation. So these are the two tissues called complex permanent tissues. They are also called conducting tissue because both of them help in the conduction. One helps in the conduction of water with dissolved salts, the other helps in the conduction of food and hormones. Why they are called complex permanent tissue? Because the xylem is made of four different types of cells, which many writers also mention as elements. Just one way of expressing. There are actually four different types of cells. Similarly, the phloem is also made of four different type of cells. What are they? Number one is called as tracheid. Number two, vessels. Number three, parenchyma. And the fourth one is called as fibers. Fibers are nothing but a type of sclerenchyma only. So these are the four types of cells which joins together to form the tissue called xylem. You can see four very different kinds of cells. In what way they are different, you will see. Similarly, the phloem is also made up of four different types of cells called seed tube cells. the companion cell and the last two are same no? it is parenchyma and fibers so what are these cells in what way they are different what is their structure that little bit we have to see but this you remember that these are the four names of the cells which joins to form the tissue xylem and these are the four different cells which join to form the phloem. What is the function of xylem and phloem? It's very clear. Xylem helps in ascent of sap, which is transport of water and salts from roots to the leaves. And phloem helps in the transport of food and hormones from tip of the plant. You know, the food is synthesized at the tip in the leaves. And the hormones are synthesized at the apical meristematic zones. They are both at the tip of the shoot of the plants. From them to all other parts, they transport it. We will see the different cells which join to form the tissue one by one. So, talking about xylem, the first one is called as tracheids. The different cells we join to form the xylem. Tracheids are nothing but spindle shaped cells. They are dead cells. Dead cells in the sense there is no cytoplasm inside. That is, they are hollow cells having perforations. Or pores, you can say, on the 
same wall. If you see this, it is like a spindle shaped cell. With, it is, you know, cells are three dimensional in nature. So it is three dimensional, not the two dimensional structure. It is almost like vegetables which are pointed at the two ends and bulging at the center. And all along the cell wall there are pores. So a tracheid looks like that. It is present in all type of plants. You know plants are classified into three categories. The herbs, the shrubs and the trees. In all of them they are found and help in the conduction of water in them. The second one is called as vessels. Vessels are again hollow tube like structures running from the root till the leaves and they are present only in the trees. They are absent in herbs and shrubs. That is the difference. Both these tissues are dead tissue, dead cells. This is also a dead cell. The third one of course is called parenchyma and we have already studied about parenchyma. Parenchyma is a living cell carries life activities and because life activities are carried out they synthesize food even and provide energy to the plant and the last one that is called as fiber or sclerenchyma we have already studied this also it is group of dead cells which provide strength to the tissue. So these four type of cells they join together to build up the whole xylem. If you want to draw the whole picture of a xylem, what you have to do? Try to understand? First you draw a tracheid, one above the other, it runs from shoot tip till the root tip and you make these pores on it that will give the indication of presence of tracheid just beside the tracheid you draw a, a cell wall on both sides and the, you know it is group of many cells but the cells which were separated from each other the partition between the cell is lost so it becomes a hollow tube from root to the leaves that is a hollow tube like structure that is called vessel. Besides the vessel, if you draw group of cells which are living cells, like this, having the cell wall, the cell membrane, the vacuole, and then the cytoplasm with the nucleus. Similarly, cell wall and cell membrane you draw in wall, then draw a large vacuole, the nucleus, and the cytoplasm. That will form the parenchyma, the third one. And sclerenchyma are like fibers. You draw simple thread like structures like this. That is the last part. So a group of all these four different types of cells makes up the whole xylem, makes up the whole xylem. And the next complex permanent tissue that we have to study is called as phloem. We will see that also. As far as phloem is concerned, it helps in the translocation process, that is transport of food and hormones from the tip of the plant to all other parts. It is made up of the first one is called sieve tube cells. First you consider tube cells. There is a group of large number of cells in three dimensional structure. Each cell is separated from the other one by a cell wall a plate of cell wall between them. Generally this was the cell, you know, with the cell membrane and the cytoplasm and all. This of cell there. This is the plate of cell wall between the two cells, partition between the two cells. Now what happens is, on that cell wall, you develop, draw like this. There are pores on the cell wall. And one cell is connected to the next cell through these pores. Two cells, one above the other separated by the cell wall and in the cell wall there are pores. So through the pores the material go from one cell to the next cell. So it's a tube 
हैविंग दिस प्लेट्स विच आर कॉल्ड अ सीव सीव आप जानते हो हिंदी में उसको बोलते हैं चलनी जिसमें छेद छेद होता है तो इसी के नाम पड़ गया सीव ट्यूब सेल्स देन द सेकेंड वन इज कॉल्ड एज कॉम्पेनियन सेल कॉम्पेनियन सेल्स आर वे सीव ट्यूब सेल्स के बारे में लिख सकते हैं ग्रुप ऑफ सेल्स इन विच द सेपरेटिंग सेल वॉल हैज पोर्स दैट इज द सीव ट्यूब सेल कॉम्पेनियन सेल्स आर द सेल्स विच आर क्लोजली अटैच विथ द सीव ट्यूब सेल्स Because they are closely attached, always remains closer together. Along with it, therefore, the name is companion cell. It is a living cell. It is a living cell. The third one and the fourth one we have just now discussed. The third one is called parenchyma, and the fourth one is called as the fibers or the sclerenchyma. These four tissues. One specialty of companion cell is, although it is a plant cell, remains very closely attached to the seed tube cells. it will have cell wall and cell membrane no doubt but then this cells contains no vacuole that is a specialty generally we know that plant cells have a large vacuole which will draw here also in parenchyma when you draw parenchyma there are large number of cells the cell wall the cell membrane a large vacuole and then the cytoplasm in all the cells you draw that vacuole But when you draw this companion cell, you draw a very very dense cytoplasm with a nucleus inside. That is a big difference between the parenchyma and the companion cell. Companion cells are also living cells, but they are a special plant cell without any vacuole. And after parenchyma, you draw these fiber-like structures: the sclerenchyma fiber, the parenchyma, the companion cell, and the seed tube cells. And the group of these four cells will make up the phloem, which takes the function of translocation. So, a sum total of the entire plant tissue that we have studied till now is the first part called meristematic tissue. Simply, we write it a dividing tissue. helps in growth then coming to its parts first one apical meristematic tissue it increases the length or you can say the height of plant the second is the lateral meristematic tissue helps in increasing increases the girth or the thickness of the plant and the third one what is called as intercalary meristematic tissue it helps in the formation it forms new branches and leaves so that is the function then we come to the simple permanent tissue permanent tissue and carries out life activities the second one colenchyma it also carries out life activities and gives support and flexibility to plant parts the third one the sclerenchyma it provides the mechanical strength to the plant parts the fourth one of course is the protective tissue called epidermis it protects the plant parts present as outer covering the fifth one is called cork it is impervious 
it doesn't allow the entry of water and the microorganisms. So that is the way it helps the plants. And the last one that we have just now seen, the complex permanent tissues that is xylem and phloem. Xylem helps in conduction of water with dissolved salts of course from roots to the leaves and phloem helps in the conduction of food and hormones. So that is a sum total of the gist of the functions of all different plant parts. Their structure we have seen and in a sum total you can see the functions or the role they play in a plant.